Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role-playing games. And today we are talking about the Grimlock. Hey Brian. Hey Will. How you doing today? I'm fucking locked in, man. Yeah. Aptly so. But are you grim about it? No. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, I'm happy to be doing the Dungeon Cast. Me back too. at it again. Damn, Daniel. Indeed. We are back at it with some classic monsters today. Uh, and that means it's back to the Underdark again. That's right. Don't <laughs> fart there. Don't got, fart there. People are confused. Yes. That's why I say that. You need to go watch our Chromatic Dragons episode two from like six years ago to get that joke. Yeah, it's a good joke. <laughs> it is. If you fart, you attract monsters down here. It's also a joke that's heavily revisited in our Flumps episode. <laughs> yeah, and several others. Yes, um, indeed. And we were talking about making it a shirt, and we never we did. Should. We should. But we still could. Should. With the It's revival. <laughs> indeed. Don't fart. Hashtag don't fart in the Underdark. Um, so I've begun to wonder, is it that early D&D writers particularly liked Monsters from the Deep theme? Or did we, as a show, just manage to really avoid a lot of underground monsters? Because every single classic monster we're covering is is a deep underground one. I, I think the latter. You think so? I think we just you think somehow we just avoided it. Like, it's, there's a lot of sky monsters, too, right? Like, I guess the, there is a lot of flying monsters. Dragons, Periton. Yeah, and we we have covered them. We've covered manticores, and we covered chimeras. They we, can we've fly. touched on the rock. The the rock. A, a hippogriff. Yeah. Uh, griffons. Griffons. On, what else? What else flies? Wyverns? Wyverns. Um, <laughs> it's another joke. If you listen to that episode, it's another deep cut. We're, um, we're re- it's been several hundred episodes. We're redoing some of our old jokes. Indeed, we somebody are. Somebody called me out we on doing We ran a joke out of material. Yeah, somebody called me out on redoing a joke I did years ago, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm good. Yeah, maybe I just still find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm glad you do, too. Yeah, I do. Whoever I you do. are. So either way, whatever the reason is, deep into the dark caverns of the Underdark, we go on today's episode of The Dungeon Cast. Hell yeah. So the Grimlock goes back to early D&D. Uh, in the late 1970s, the British magazine White Dwarf began collecting submissions for proposed monsters from its readers. Many of these were gathered up and published as TSR's Fiend Folio in 1981. Cool. One of these new monsters was the Grimlock, uh, created by Albi Fiore, a staff editor at White Dwarf and one of the book's illustrators. And I want to ask you, are you familiar with the book slash multiple films, The Time Machine? Yeah, um, I remember reading The Time Machine in the, in the fifth grade. Yeah, it, I think Very it's a really cool, cool story. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, today's topic is almost definitely, in my opinion, based on H.G. Wells' Morlock, a fierce subterranean humanoid warrior with blank and sightless eyes, thick gray skin, usually clad in dark rags, with particularly white and sharp teeth that dwell deep underground, only coming to the surface to take humans for food. Yeah, that's what happens in the time machine. So spoilers for that. Um, eventually, that he gets to that it place does. where he can't escape, right? His mm-hmm. machine breaks? His machine breaks, yes. And then he's like, ah, oh, man, at least it's peaceful here. And then these and fucking then crazy ass underground up. people show up. That's yeah. exactly right. He's <laughs> like, oh, no, I need my time machine to work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Doesn't. Um, well, Grimlocks in D&D are a race of monstrous humanoids that live in the Underdark, uh, the degenerated descendants of humans who wandered into its depths centuries ago. Grimlocks are humanoid creatures with slightly scaled gray skin that is usually scarred from hunts through constricted passageways, as well as purposeful scarification of their bodies with unique spiral patterns describing their names and biographies. They use these scars to help identify one another by touch. In addition, those with a special status in their society often have decorative designs scarred into their skin. Grimlocks have sharp teeth and typically black hair, often long and unkempt. Most Grimlocks have long claw-like nails. Perhaps the most striking feature of a Grim- Gr- Grimlock, though, is their complete absence of eyes or eye sockets. Oh. Blank skin stretches across their upper face, giving Grimlocks a shadowed, masked visage. However, their exceptional senses of hearing and smell more than compensate for their lack of vision. The average height for a Grimlock, male or female, is five to five and a half feet. The average weight is around 180 pounds. They mature within three years. Grimlocks typically wear little clothing or armor, though some are known to sport tanned leather belts and harnesses as well as decorative bracers. Oh, man. That's crazy. The A Grimlock's ears prick up at the faintest footfall or whispering, whispering echo down stone passageways. Also farts. It can speak in tones <laughs> too low for most other humanoids to hear. The odors of sweat, flesh, and blood awaken its hunger. 
as do farts, and it can track by <laughs> such scents like a bloodhound. To enhance their senses, Grimlocks leave trails of blood, piles of dung, or other viscera of slain prey in places far from their lairs. When intruders pass through those areas, they carry the foul scents with them, warning their Grimlock, Grimlocks of their approach. Yeah, the Grimlocks shit whenever they go anywhere so they can find their way home. Yeah. It's their breadcrumbs. Yep. Also, 180 pounds is 81 kilograms. Oh, nice. Thank you. Sorry. Roughly. Did you get the five to five and a half feet? <laughs> Oh, uh, my hang bad. on a second. <laughs> okay, while you do that, I'll keep reading. Feet to meters. For most creatures, blindness is an enormous hindrance. For a Grimlock, with its other heightened senses, sightlessness is a boon. A Grimlock isn't fooled by visual illusions or misperceptions. It is, it is fearless as it stalks its prey. They're roughly 1.6 meters tall. There we go. This nice. is five and a half, right? Well, I said five to five and a half, so that works. That's the high end. Nice. <laughs> Grimlocks prefer to keep them themselves, uh, but their isolation is often disrupted when mind flayers raid their packs looking for slave fodder, or, as more often is the case, their mushroom fields are raised and their water cisterns are drained by drow. Uh oh. This leaves the Grimlocks starving and desperate, and they are forced to raid surface communities in order to survive. Dang. For yeah, for this reason, Grimlocks are hated and feared by surface dwellers. Oh, so the raiding of them causes them to raid. Uh-huh. And then they just look it's like... It's a perpetual cycle. They just look like the bad guy. They do. That's too bad. It is very... It's a system of poverty. Indeed. That is, like, not healthy for the Grimlock, but, you know... Or anyone involved, really. Really not anybody. Terrible. Well, I mean, the drow and the and the mind flayers benefit, it sounds like. Yeah, that's true. Although they're always fucking with each other, too. So, yeah. So never any If they're in a bad position, they can just go raid a Grimlock group. Yeah. Tribe. Yeah. Something, something. Okay. Though Grimlocks are prone to evil acts, their intent is rarely outright malicious. Rather, their behavior is rooted in a deep sense of self-preservation and struggle for survival. Grimlocks prefer fresh meat and fish, but they will live on fungi, insects, and even resort to cannibalism if they need to. They do not permit weak members of their tribe to survive. Oh, man. Yeah. Grimlocks eat any raw flesh they can find, especially that of humans. <laughs> because of this, their populations are often decimated from feasting upon diseased meat. They're not the smartest bunch. No, they're, but, and they're not smart, but they are victims of oppression. Indeed. That's <laughs> okay. exactly right. Grimlocks are very blunt and suspicious of other creatures, as they probably should be. Yeah. <laughs> Those who wander away from their kin often experience culture shock in this regard. These wanderers are also known to be capable of overcoming their xenophobic leanings as well as their cannibalistic ones. Uh, viewing each individual they meet as a potential pack member. Oh, okay. Like, you come come hang out? Yeah, come hang you out. Come, ha come hang out? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> we need people with eyes like you. Right, right. <laughs> okay. So 5e has some conflicting lore on Grimlock origins. Uh, there's essentially two different stories. I kind of chalk it up to there being a Forgotten Realms origin and a more general vanilla origin that is more or less in lines with some of the old Greyhawk stuff. Yeah, because it's such an old monster to yeah. be introduced. Yeah. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then they probably rewrote it at some point in Forgotten Realms. That makes sense. Yep. So let's start with the second one, which is lore directly out of the 5e monster manual. Let's do it. The degenerate subterranean Grimlocks were once human, but their worship of the mind flayers over generations of prowling the Underdark transformed them into blind, monstrous cannibals long ago. Okay. The empire of the mind flayers once spread across many worlds, enslaving countless races. Among those were human cultures whose high priests the mind flayers subverted using their insidious powers of thought control. Those leaders gradually turned the face of their followers toward the Illithids, which they worshipped as blasphemous deities. Mm. So the Mind Flayers, they're notorious for doing this exact type of shit down here like all the time, right? And not yeah. just to these creatures, but to everybody? Uh, yeah, to everybody. Uh, so the thing is, at so, this point of the quote-unquote timeline, uh, the Mind Flayers that you're finding in the Underdark are kind of like, um, they're kind of in hiding. Because you got to remember, there's the ongoing war between the Gith Yankee and Gizurai a little bit, and the Mind Flayers, who were like the original like slave race of the Mind Flayers that broke free. Yeah, is that happening in the Underdark, or is that happening in like extra space? So that's happening mostly like in extra space, astral sea. Oh, right, okay, yada, that's yada, what I yada. thought. Okay, but like there are lots of Mind Flayers that have fled to the Underdark right. to avoid the Gith. Got it. And the Gith are always hunting, so they have to come here. Yeah, a lot of times they do. Okay. Um, and basically the idea is like, we'll rebuild our under, an underground empire and then rise back up and. Yeah. And the Gith are like making underground camps probably to like. Yeah. I believe the Gith go into the underdark a lot to try and hunt. Yeah. So they'll base, they'll make base camp in the underground dark and then go on raids from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Over time, the rituals of these enslaved humans created fervent cannibal cults that regarded the brain eating of the mind flayers as a holy sacrament. 
The illithids commanded their worshippers to abduct other sentient creatures to be sacrificed. After the victims' brains had been consumed, the Mind Flayers gave the lifeless bodies to the cultists. Okay. When the rule of the Mind Flayers crumbled, their cults faced constant warfare from their enemies, the same creatures that had once been their victims. The cults fled into the underdark domain of their illithid gods. Over generations in that lightless realm, the cultists learned to rely on other senses for survival. In time, their eyes withered away and eyelids sealed, leaving only covered eye sockets behind. Grimlocks still venerate the Mind Flayers, serving them whenever possible. Grimlocks also recall the war in which they were driven underground. To them, it has never ended. They continue to return to the surface world to abduct captives for their illithid masters. They were never able to heal their trauma. No. It's sad. In the Forgotten Realms, it's a little different. It is said that the Grimlocks were the descendants of, the, of humans of Uthgart ancestry from the Golden Eagle and Red Pony tribes. Since you and I have never spoken about the Uthgart, here is a very brief primer. The Uthgart are a vast group of human barbarians of the North united in their common worship of the chieftain hero turned deity Uthgar. The 11 tribes each venerate their own distinct totem animal. Okay. Long ago, these barbarian tribes, the ones that became Grimlocks, not all of the Uthgart because they still exist, mm -hmm. uh, but these barbarian tribes vanished into the Underdark by way of a passage that leads down from beneath one stone, the Uthgart Ancestor Mound, located in the easternmost Moonwood. After years of wandering in the lightless passages of the Underdark, these barbarians evolved to become Grimlocks. That's proper noun, one stone, right? Like, that's a that's a joint. Yes, okay. yes, exactly, yeah. So one stone is the name of the Ancestor Mound, yeah. Got it. Uh, they retained twisted vestiges of their ancient traditions, including a depraved form of ancestor worship that involved cons uh, consumption of the aged and weak while they still lived. Jesus wow. Christ, guys. Is, uh, My God. It's pretty rough subject matter. Yeah. Grimlocks. Like across They're grim. the board, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite on the level like Demon Lords. But it's it's well, still a pretty bad. Flavor. This different is, flavor for sure. This is like just sad. this is underdark flavor bad. Yeah, yeah. like oppression and sadness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the underdark. Oppression, <laughs> sadness, and sometimes farts. Sometimes farts. But if you do, if you're the one that farted, you might die of sadness and oppression. Yeah, the the kind of oppression that like eats you. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> the Kool Aid Man like fucking break out of the wall to huff yeah. your farts and eat your soul. <laughs> so true. Um. Grimlocks typically have two names, a pack name and a personal name, uh, with the latter derived from some element of their underground habitat. Many wild Grimlocks are born in an extended series of caves that they call the Finger Home. Oh no, why did they call it that? <laughs> Don't know. The caverns of the Finger Home extend throughout the upper, middle, and lower Underdark. <laughs> Come hang out at my house. <laughs> my finger, finger, my very own Finger Home. Why? <laughs> I don't think I want to know. Grimlock society is organized along tribal lines. They tend to have intense distrust toward any race other than their own. They sometimes build fortress settlements far from other races. Used to be used to being exploited or raided by other races, they find it very difficult to trust anyone. Their language has no word for friend. <laughs> but they have the concept of an ally or brother. Okay. Does it like the the ranking of home that they have like is an amount of fingers? Like when you go to Raising Canes and you order a combo? <laughs> Dude, I'm really hungry right now. Don't do this to me. <laughs> this is a three-finger home. It's so big. I could super go for some Raising Cane's right now. It comes with toast. Texas toast. You know you um, can get your toast buttered on both sides there? I found that out. I, I like feel like I've heard that. Yeah. Um, I'm not interested. I got enough butter on my Texas toast. It's good. It's good why don't, enough. Why don't, don't they season don't their chicken it. at Raising Cane's? Is it not seasoned? No. It tastes good to me. I like it. I mean, it's fine. It's the sauce. Really. The sauce it's is like, sauce. you season yeah. it yourself. Yeah. With the sauce, which is bomb. I love watching people make the Raisin Cane sauce on TikTok. Anyway, yeah. Let's get Anyways, back to it. All right, back to Grimlocks. Um, they, oh, yeah. They have no word for friend, but they have the concept of ally or brother. Mm -hmm. This is expressed in a specific aspect of Grimlock society called the hunt bond. A vow of mutual respect and protection that every Grimlock has with one or more creatures, usually other Grimlocks. Those hunt bonded to a Grimlock are considered its closest friends, and the creature will do anything to protect them. Mm. Grimlock art is usually based on touch, scent, and moisture level. <laughs> they normally create sculptures or etchings carved into stone walls. They also manipulate the flow of wind in the caves to create mournful music. I was going to say, that's a going theme in the caves and, like, cave art. Mm -hmm. it, it does have to do with, like, the humidity down there, right? I remember that being yeah. a thing with, like, Kuatoa and, uh, and mm -hmm. stone giants, like, doing 
like weird sculptures or art or whatever. It it vaguely sounds familiar, yeah. In the Underdark of Faerun, some groups of Grimlocks worship uh, individual Medu- Medusa, or Medusas, however you want to say it. Okay. Considering them as minor deities, the power of a Medusa's gaze is beyond the Grimlocks' ability to comprehend oh, this. They are blind. Got it. So it seems divine to them. They're the perfect uh, enlistees. I guess so. More enlightened Grimlocks, however, tend to worship Shar, the goddess of darkness. You know, the super evil one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And some Grimlocks are still known to worship elephants, damn it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you get, the whole idea is brainwashing. So if you get right. brainwashed and somehow escape and been like, I want to go back to dad. Right. Dad was good to me. He put slugs in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> the language of the Grimlocks is a dialect of Terran, which is the... Um, like the Earth primordial? Yeah, the Earth primal. Yeah, exactly. Earth elemental language. And undercommon. Some choose to learn abyssal. <laughs> yeah. And other evil tongues in order to gain power for themselves by making sinister deals. That is the most exciting thing about the Grimlock that we've read so far is that they can they can do dastardly things as well to gain power. Yeah. And like want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Some Grimlocks are known to do work for other races as ambushers of underdark caravans or as looters. So mercenaries. Looters of ancient ruins. Like, yeah, that yeah. makes that makes sense. Yeah. They don't need sight. They're like good for the underdark, like in terms of raids and stuff like that. Yeah, that makes sense. They're very good at traversing the underdark. Um, and again, without eyes, they're immune to a lot of things that you know people with eyes are not immune to. So yeah, that's all I have on Grimlocks. Yeah, they're, they're a pretty a quote unquote simple monster. They're I mean they're kind of multifaceted when you look at the lore. Like you could go the mercenary route or the illithid enslaved route or the Grimlock just trying to fucking live and being oppressed by everybody else route or yeah. a million ways you could go with they it. They kind of remind me of troglodytes, like the bad yeah. smell thing. Yeah. And like the I forgot about troglodytes. Sort of hanging out and yeah. being weird. Being weird. Yeah, yeah. except these ones are blind. And yeah. Not as aggressive, depending. They're not as vile as troglodytes. Yeah. Well, but except for the cannibalistic ones. And Those the ones that are bad. shitting on the floor to find their way to the back to their finger house. <laughs> no. That's pretty That's pretty it's vile. It's pretty vile. Okay, I take it back. Yeah, let me just bleed a little bit right here so I can smell my way home. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do in the Underdark, I guess. Yeah, you do. Uh, they don't Ooh. care about farting down there. All right, let's take a short rest. Okay. It's the grand adventures of Ilian and Beard. Ilian, I feel like we've been walking for, for hours and hours since that weird, you know, elongated creature with all the tentacles was was last seen. Yes, it would seem that the backer's burrow was quite the extensive, and the they would even call this a super dungeon. I would say so. It smells, you know, I've been in several, and this one is, I mean, do you feel the moisture? It feels like it's wetness. Yes, we so, seem to have uh, entered a natural cave system that's attached to the burrow. Is that uh, what's happening to the yeah. walls? I yes. noticed their smoothness became more. Less. Yes, smooth. which honestly, the roper should have tipped us off that this was about to happen. They usually don't venture into like unnatural uh, structures. Uh, you know, uh, we could have asked him, I guess, but you had me shoot him in his eye. I mean, he was he was asking the most ridiculous questions. He, did so deserve, he needed to be put to. He deserved it. He did yes, deserve absolutely. it. You're, you're absolutely. Right. You're right. You, God, it's, it's really starting to smell terrible. Oh, God, you're right. I do. Oh. Is that excrement I see on the floor? Oh, let's go this way. Oh, the gods. Away from this. These trails of detritus are the likes of which I've never seen. Let's find a place to long rest. I'm tired. Uh, yes, yes. A long rest is, is overdue, I think. This direction. Yes, yeah. uh, let's get away from these puddles and this one and this trail of, oh, God. Uh, okay. Uh, how about how about right over here? This looks good. Flat surface. Mostly uh, yes. dry. Yes. Okay. We're g- I, uh... A view of both the exit and entrance, depending on which direction you're coming from. Yes, this this would shoot us just fine. Quite good. Yeah. Um, I'll set up camp. Are you, would you like to start the fire as you normally do? I will. We cold camping it? We'll, you know, let's not draw attention to ourselves. Let's cold camp it. I will meditate while you set up the camp. Tense it is. And I, I begin to say, we set up the tents. Ah, da, 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 da. They're setting up the tents. Ah, it's done. Oh, man, I'm so quick. Record time. Oh, my goodness. I'm really getting good at this. You're quite proficient. And I did it silently. You really did. I meditated the entire time and didn't even notice. I put the stakes in the ground and everything, not a single noise. Fantastic. We're the loudest things here. Let us. Regardless of that. Engage in our long rest. Ah, yes. I have put out your bedroll just so. Thank feng you. shui with the feet side <laughs> against the tent opening. Just how I like it. Yes, the rain guard is up, even though we're inside the cave, the way you like it as well. Yes. Anyway. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Cave rain. Writing that down. Cave rain. 
Alien. Yes, man. I have a request. Yes, uh, how, how may I be of service? Would you please tell me my my favorite bedtime story? Oh, of course, Ben. Of course. Settle down. Let me let me paint you a picture. I'm tucked in. Deep at the bottom of this super mega dungeon filled with unknown, unnameable monstrosities and filled with danger the likes of which you and I could, could only imagine. Well, this is the scary part <laughs> of the story. Is an item of great and wondrous power. The pendant of plenteous patrons. My goodness. Beard. And we will Such claim this pendant. We'll claim it. <laughs> and with it, with it and its power, which is powered by the souls of a thousand generous benefactors, we will benefit. Beard. We will benefact. We will benefact. And, that, and that's a fact. I will will be responsible for wonders the likes of which this world has never seen. And you, what shall you do ah, with I, the patron's package? Lakeside paint. Oh, oh yes. Acrylic paints are expensive. Imagine it, Ben. Imagine being funded to do my art. Indeed. Not to have to worry about bills. Indeed. Things like the, the bills. Indeed. The, the tax man. We'll sl- that. We'll slay him. That's the power of our, lies our benefactions. At the bottom. Of this venture of ours. Oh, dream oh, beer. Oh, dream. Oh, oh, what is that? Hitting the ground. It's Whoa, shaking. What's happening? Uh, oh my god. Did you hear that? Look, something's coming this way. Oh. Oh, get out of the way, man. Oh god. Oh, well, they don't, they don't have eyes. They oh. don't have eyes. They, they're oh. carrying bone clubs. I know what creatures these are, man. These what are Grimlocks. They're usually very violent, cannibalistic, but these ones seem to just be flying past us. Oh, without man. a care. Except for that one over there, it's, it's shitting on the ground. Oh god, it's shitting on the ground. <laughs> Then Look away, that ex- man. That explains that. Oh, oh now God. it's running again. Okay. There it goes. Oh, God, oh. there's three more shitting over oh, there. Oh, no, oh, come on. Jesus. Stop. Okay, God. okay. Avert your they eyes, They seem to be man. avoiding the tent. Oh, what are God. they climbing out of the walls? Over? They've ruined our long rest location, Did and now it smells like feces. Did you notice that some of the, the shapes in the walls that they're climbing out of look, look a lot like fingers? I, I suppose they do, man. I don't know if that's pertinent. Oh, my God. I oh, do. the walls are crashing down. Oh, oh God, it's a purple worm. Man, run. We've returned. Indeed we have. We're fucking back. Indeed we are. We're underground. It's yes. It's deep and dark and dirty down here. Yes. Where the Grimlocks be. Mm. It's my favorite. It's smelly. In-game children's book, Where the Grimlocks Be. That's I, I'd about. read that book. It's about how not to go into strange caves. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. Because you'll become this... Uh, they look more human than I thought they were going to in the upper... I know you said humanoid, but like the upper body, I was picturing like... Pyramid face or whatever that dude's name is from the hills really? have eyes. Wait, oh, the only pyramid pyramid, head? pyramid heads from Silent Hill. Silent Hill. That's what I meant to say. Silent Hill is what <laughs> okay. I meant to say. Okay, I mean his his body is humanoid except for his head. Which yeah, is I, well, I mean the eyebrows like make it look like there's more eye than I was. You know what here's, I mean? Here's a classic image of a of a Grimlock. Okay, I mean like I was just way off, and I, I'm here's gonna an, just call here's it another there. one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Yeah. yeah, they kind of look like troll people or like bad hill giants. Yeah, bad hill giants. They look like bad hill giants. A little bit. So real quick before we get into the stat block here, um, you'll notice in 5e the challenge rating of a Grimlock is only one quarter, which is so low. It's very low. It's very low. Um, which really surprised me as someone who came from 4e because I, I was like, I thought they were like things you didn't really fuck with till you were like level 11 in 4e. I mean, there is stuff in the stat block that might kind of buff it but right. yeah this is a horde monster right and it i guess so and i ended up pulling up uh 4e's compendium here and i got every single grimlock by the way there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different types of grimlocks i got bored and started making grimlocks no 4e just does that it's like hey yeah. you want a monster i'll give you 17 types of it that's cool um and they range anywhere from level 9 to level 22 so mm. yeah i i wasn't wrong in that memory so i i wonder why they decided to to make it only a quarter because they seem like they should be scarier it was five like, is like the strip down sim- make it simple like yeah you know tweak it yourself if you want that's sort of true thing. that's true um but we got a grimlock it's a medium humanoid of neutral evil 
So they they are inherently evil, so they deserve their oppression. And they care not for either law or chaos. Nigh. Nigh do they. Armor class is 11. HP is 11. That's 2d8 plus 2. And they have a 30-foot movement speed. Their strength is plus 3, dex plus 1, con plus 1, intelligence minus 1, wisdom minus 1, charisma minus 2. They're not a very powerful monster. I mean, they're strong. They are strong. 16 is uh, good. Sk- so they're going to hit you real good. Uh, skills, athletics plus 5, perception plus 3, stealth plus 3. Uh, condition immunities, blinded. Ha. Senses, blind sight, 30 feet. Or 10 feet while deafened, blind beyond this radius. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, necessary. Their passive perception is 13. They speak under common, or like you were saying in the lore, you can kind of yeah, you could cultify the them, if yeah, you will. Cool. Yeah. Uh, quarter challenge rating, like you said, that yields 50 experience points with a proficiency bonus of plus two. <clears throat> they have blind senses. The Grimlock can't use its blind sight while deafened and unable to smell, so it needs something turned on. So if you fart a bunch, you might fuck with it. <laughs> Don't. Like, if you're going to fart, fart, fart a, a bunch. Lot. Yeah. Fart so much they can't decide where you Overwhelm are. Overwhelm them. Yeah. Or if you fart a little bit, then fart a lot, you know? Like, draw them in. Keen hearing and smell. The Grimlock has advantage on wisdom, perception checks that rely on hearing or fart zoning in on. <laughs> Stone camouflage. The Grimlock has advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide in rocky terrain. So they're going to be all kinds of hidden all over this place. Uh, and yeah, yeah for, they're, they're quite good at camouflage. For actions, we have the Spiked Bone Club. Melee weapon attack with plus five to hit. It's a reach of five feet on one target. It's going to hit for five or 1d4 plus three bludgeoning damage plus two 1d4 piercing damage. So kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, it's your straightforward mob monster. There's... The the main things that make it stand out are like the, the camouflage and the blind senses. Like those are the main two things that make it like something that might catch the players unexpected. Um, I will it's say this: comparable I, to a goblin. Yeah, I I just compare. I so I just looked up the five E Drow monster stat block, mm-hmm. um, and that's also one quarter. Oh, okay. And which is again weird to, to me coming from four E again. Drow were not something you face. No, until, like, I, level I feel 12. like the Drow in today's. Like, if they were to read the PHP and see that or the monster manual, they'd be offended. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. So, I, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think 5e just wanted to make the Underdark a little bit more accessible to low level characters, which makes sense. Yeah, getting down there early. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, goblins are better. Goblins are actually pretty cool. They I have like a goblins. plus six to stealth. Like, who cares if they don't, if they, they can hide behind rocks pretty much just what's as good. The, what's the challenge rating on that goblin? Quarter. But quarter. I feel like the stat block is better. Yeah. What's his HP? Uh, seven. Okay, that's, that's pretty where low. It leads, but What's the AC is fifteen. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, that's and way they better. They have two different attacks. They have, I mean, you can they just have a range throw attack. some armor on the Grimlock. Like, okay, he, you it's, can. Yeah, but it's the, it's wearing scale armor. It's got a fifteen AC now. Yeah, I mean the goblins are going to be just as good as hi- at hiding, and then if it's not got better, a short yeah. bow. Yeah, but they don't have blind sight. They don't have blind sight. They have dark vision. <laughs> yeah, which is almost as good as blind sight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with goblins are superior. I I'm I'm with you. I, goblin v Grimlock. Gobbo, yeah. Gobbo's gonna win. Gobbo's gonna get him. He, well, he's just gonna stand in the back and shoot him. That's true. And the Grimlock won't even see him because the blind side only goes out thirty feet. Yeah. So they they both hide. One hide good. Yeah. That'd be a fun a fun face off. Quarter <laughs> quarter rating creatures just going in on yeah, each other. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, that's all I got on Grimlock. I don't know if you got anything you want to add. Um, I felt like it was more like uh, interesting to talk about it from like the Illithid side. Uh, like it always is, stuff. man. Illithids are like, they are very interesting. I'll say this. So in a lot of our older episodes, um, you'll notice I'll like slam two monsters together because like, yeah. one can't really carry an episode. Yeah. And that is pretty good for the podcast and the things. It's very, very bad for the YouTube end of things. Yeah, if someone's not interested in one to, of the monsters, they're yeah. not going to click it. Or again, it makes it harder to search for it. Yeah, as a learning tool, it's better to separate everything. Exactly. So, what would you do with a Grimlock stat block that has become a cultist? How would you flavor that up? Um, Does Fori have some insight on what we can do to these guys to maybe mm, uh, well, spice them up differently depending on what the situation their environment calls for. I don't think I'd look to Fori for that specifically. I think with the cultist one that's it's not so bad, right? Like maybe give them 
Like if they're a cultist, they're part of an, or, uh, part of an organization. If they're mm-hmm. part of an organization of some sort, they probably have some sort of resources. So immediately I'm going to give them some sort of armor to up their AC. And then I'll give them a cup, like three daily spells, right? There'll be like three, two level ones and a level two. Yeah, right? like it's whatever evil deity decided to grant them magic. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, obviously maybe a, a slightly upgraded weapon because right now they're using a spiked bone club. Yeah. Maybe give them something metal, you know, it's like this this dude's part of an organization. Yeah, like they have a v- adventure equipment yeah. or something like that that they yeah, come across. Something, yeah, they basically just upgrade their shit. And then um and then maybe give them a couple extra hit die for that the HP. Yeah, like you could boost their their bad charisma up with like the warlocky stuff so they can yeah, cast yeah. actual magic. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And have it be, you know, not just shit. Yeah, swap swap some stuff around. Maybe we got one that's like way more chariz- charismatic and, and like never got the strength, right? Yeah, and then you could do psychic stuff to it for the the illithid. Like, um, they'd probably be like bodyguards or footmen or like the thing you run into first when you're coming into an illithid camp, like the first layer of defense, right? Sort of creature. Right. And then depending on like the level of the party, you could just do like a horde of them versus like three or four of them or one of them, you know. Yeah, they're more like a uh, zombie mentality. Mm-hmm. Like maybe give yeah. them um, like claws or grapples or something like that. Yeah. Mm. The thing is, they're not actually very big either. So like you know, they're they're medium size, but they're also like they're only five feet tall, five to five and a half. You know, I see. Um, so like it's not like they like an orc is going to loom over you know your average adventuring party. Not necessarily all the time, just on average. Yeah. While the Grimlocks aren't really, they don't even got that size factor to to scare the party a little bit. Yeah, they're they're being treated more like a like a goblin. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, there there are some things you can do, but this this really is just a horde monster, like deep down. Yeah, this is your this is your underdark horde monster when like goblins and the other things don't quite make sense, and you want something that has that like underdark flavor. They're so sad. This they one, are. The They're sad, the, man. The one in the picture looks kind of mad. Yeah, about he's, it too. Like, he's just upset. Yeah. It's just like, man, this fuck sucks. This one's yeah, this one screws <laughs> sucks. That's exactly what Get out of my finger doing. house. <laughs> Why the fuck do they call it a finger house? I don't know. There's I'm gotta sure be there's something a, Oh, there's definitely okay, I'll look at it. Somebody up. please on. let me know. No, I guarantee you there's like a fucking Wikipedia article or something on it. Finger home. Cause this is a this is a Forgotten Realms thing, so give me a second. Me too. I'm gonna Google it at the same time furiously. <sighs> No, it doesn't have a page. It just redirects me to the Grimlock page. Hey, Diggy, why is it called the Finger Home? <laughs> yeah, I know Diggy probably knows. There's lots of people that probably know. If anyone else, probably one if of them. everyone wants to know, go to the Discord and you'll find out. Also, there's a fly in the studio, and if you guys can hear it on the mic, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it is like a monstrously loud fly. Yeah, we cut once for it, but now it's here again. Yeah. I, I don't care to like not hide it from you any longer. But um yeah. All right. Are we ready to take let's take a long <laughs> let's rest. Let's take a long rest. Hey everybody, welcome to the long rest. This is the part of the episode where we hang out with you guys mostly. That's what we want to do these days. Uh, we want to read some YouTube comments because we forgot to last time. And uh, it's just who we are, but we get around to it. Um, let's see. Vampires and stuff. Oh, this is from the Ropers episode, which was a uh, smashing, smashing episode. What a hit. <laughs> a Dungeon Cast classic, if In, you will. Indeed. Uh, yeah, we got Thomas Pauly, 9526, said, named like a turd, looking like a wiener. Really fits the format of the show. How could you miss this one before? How did we miss this one? How did we? Uh, no, it's it's actually coming up at the right time because this is our um, this is like our our dick joke era. I think we've we're leaning <laughs> even harder into we've it than we ever have before. The dick joke. Um, My God, Zach Walters eight seven nine seven says old D and D editions are like classic rock, but fourth edition is like death metal. I agree with that statement. I also agree with that statement. They also said on a separate comment. Uh, I feel like the Roper's eye has the texture and flavor of a boiled egg, and giraffe uh, Lyle mating should be canon. Or the giraffes, like, so oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus. A lot of yeah. people were into that. Thank you guys for liking that. <laughs> um, and they said, honestly, the Patreon mini shows are turning into my favorite part. I think you're referencing Ilian and Beern. Yes. The Adventures of Ilian and Beeren. That starts at episode 350 and it's in the short rests. Uh, we're talking about compiling them when we have enough and putting them on Patreon so people can like listen to them in a row. Separately. Yeah, because there will be like 
just like this show, there will be light canon <laughs> with it. Indeed. It's meant to go on forever and for advertisers to sort of like sponsor them, which would be fun because <laughs> we want to spice up the way we do ads and hopefully Indeed. this is the answer. But we like doing skits um, and have had fun and like how people are reacting to Alien and Beeren. Uh, Forta Horde says, love the monster content. Keep it up. Oh, did it again. We got it. Another monster this episode. Uh, Weed Leaves and Seeds 8025 says, I love your guys' videos and have been coming to this channel for inspiration for years. I would love an episode about Candle Keep, its lore, and what it's about. There's not much info on it at all. Thanks, guys. Keep it up. That's, oh. a, that's a good suggestion. I'll look into it. Uh, this episode, oh, Coco, uh, Coco Apoffs says, This episode really rocks because of how Brian and Will stick to their classic style. Really ropes <laughs> viewers in. Ah. <laughs> Vampires and Stuff says, kind of want to do an LOZ-style boss version of this with abilities of, or at least inspired by, all the different versions. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, Bryant Von Miller says, these short rests are so hilarious. Another Alien and Beard fan. Thank, Thank you, you, Bryant. Thank Bryant you. also says, listening at 22 minutes and on, I had a thought. Imagine a roper that can camo itself like a chameleon, but on the surface uh, as a tree. Using brush and bramble with its numerous tentacles. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's a fucking bushman. Yeah. It's a bush, a, yeah, bush roper. You're a bush roper. Um, they leave several other comments, so I'll I'll move on from there. But thank you, Bryant. Um, you guys, uh, a war and peace eleven. Is that a? Uh, no, it's not. War and peace eleven says you guys are spoiling us with all this monster lore. Hell yeah! And there's some we more. Do this what episode. we can. It's time. Um, we'll get to an artifact. I think next episode. Yes. Well, um, sort of. Items. Magic items. Yeah. Um, Brian Font Miller says, Thanks for all the videos, fellas. Been loving the work for years. I just, they left so many comments. I have to read some of them. <laughs> that they said today was their 26th birthday. Happy birthday. I'm not going to do much today since uh, I'm at my grandmom's house. Going to relax for a while, listen and laugh uh, to my favorite D&D &D dudes. Okay. Well, that was, that was definitely worth Thank reading. You. It looks like we replied. You said happy. I think you did. You said happy birthday. Yeah. That I was little. Did. So now I'm saying happy birthday. <laughs> Um, in the mind of Sam seven seven four three says this is how it's always been until Dragon Magazine. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Um, maybe just the fact that it's a dick monster. <laughs> maybe it's a reference to the fact that like Dragon Magazine always changes it from whatever it always was. Maybe. Yeah. That's the only, yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, Death Dice Dungeons says, do they sl like slap together like giraffes when they are fighting? My gods, this man is a genius. Yes, I am. Um, oh, and Brian Von Miller, you're back. He said, he commented on that and said, I swear Brian made the same joke years ago in another video. There it is. That was the thing I referenced earlier this episode. You was probably you, did the giraffe neck swinging joke at some point. At some point. But whatever that point was, it was not nearly as memorable as the idea of Ropers doing it to mate. <laughs> Nick Farrell 22 says, I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. I Thanks, appreciate Nick. it. I think Nick is a patron or has been. Definitely. Yes. Um, Symmetra 1823 says, There is a molten magma roper in Princess of the Apo uh, Princes of the Apocalypse that you left out. It is actually a very cool version of the creature and consistent with that bit of lore about the first ones being made out of magma that you mentioned. Yeah, that's really cool. I again, I don't play a lot of modules and I never play, I've never played the Princess of the Apocalypse. Uh, yeah, I've heard mixed things about that one. Yeah, I can't heard, remember. I hear bad things about the first two, which are well, first three, which is that one, uh Tyranny of Dragons and uh Out of the Abyss. I hear rough things about those three adventures, but I don't know. I've never ran them. Uh, Shakars says, uh, East Coast, yeah, we do get Hard Rain, which was a good movie. Is it Hard Rain a movie? I've never heard of it. So uh, during this episode, it was started raining, and then a week later, a hurricane hit the state of uh, I mean, California. But did it really? Well, <laughs> our area, I got drizzled I on. I think we got lucky. It rained really hard here. Oh, did it? Uh, it? Yeah, it did not rain hard at all where I live. And then out in Palm Springs, they could not get in or out of the city. Like some of those desert areas got yeah. really fucked up bad. Oh, wow. There was a moat around Dodger Stadium, I saw. I mean, yeah, I knew a lot of rain was coming in. Yeah, but some places they can't hit. handle that kind of rain. That's so, interesting. Yeah, like yeah literally, desert. I was like, oh, there hell were, yeah, storm's coming. I love storms, and it just never stopped. It was chill. It was humid. Like, my yeah. windows fogged up in my house, yeah. which was fun. I had just been talking about that. Um, but, yeah, it was, I hope, I, I don't know. I haven't, like, 
like seen much more about Palm Springs or anything. Like, I'll yeah, I didn't hear anything about that, but I'm pretty unplugged. So, um, Sarah Nunos three zero three one said, "I love Underdark lore. Wieners of the Underdark are even better. <laughs> Wieners of the Elemental Chaos just getting a bite to eat in the Underdark. Oh, now we're talking, boys. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Uh, Mox6794, that's a lot of Mox, says, I can think of few monsters that I use as frequently across settings as ropers and piercers. Incredibly versatile for any cave-like environment and are great for setting a unique fight setup, especially if you get weird with the terrain. Uh, weird with a lot of things. there's a roper there, it's weird enough, my guy. <laughs> uh, Sly Scyther says, don't fart in the Underdark. I was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, no. miss. Mr. Gore RP nine ZT says he did not say shooting ropes. Oh God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Shoot That's fucking funny, ropes. So. Oh Jesus, what a that was a fucking terrible episode. Yeah. It was. Um, Pulsating hyena says good way to use ropers at higher levels are in combat oriented chases or as obstacles to overcome. My bad guy ran. Players gave chase and he led them through a piercer roper cave feeding ground. Go. On. That uh, makes sense. I like that a lot. Yeah, the bard with seven strength and eight decks got snatched up easy, uh, so they all stopped to save him while they the baddie got away. Funny part was the hard player yelling at them to keep going <laughs> in and out of character. That's, That's pretty funny. good. That's uh, funny. Steve Winkleberg, 5,300, says, Hey, I think it would be fun if, for the year of the artifact, you could talk about magical items in correlation to certain monsters. Magical items you could make. Uh, from ropers, or in the case of more intelligent monsters, magical items they could create. Just an idea. You guys already put out so much lore in each video. That's true. But um, what do you think of that, Will? Like, what monsters would pick these up? And, yeah, what if a monster had one of these special swords or whatever that we talk about? That'd be an interesting thing to throw Yeah, in. definitely, definitely. Like, uh, where would you find these in the wild kind of deal? And, like, yeah. obviously anyone outside of the attunement ones, but maybe even those can be picked up and utilized, so... It's not just adventurers that want these things. Right. Yeah, definitely. Dexter definitely. Powers 8119 says, another dick joke episode for the history books. Yep, another one for the catalog. It's in the bank. Did it again. <laughs> uh, Luis Agu Aguillon 7201 says, I hope the Roper Riddler makes a reappearance truly a worthy companion. Uh, that was from Ilian. And oh, Dan. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. Silver Triforce 313 says, Ooga Booga. Okay. Capital O, capital B. Thank Ooga you. Uh, John Green, 5725. Multiple attack penalty stops at minus 10. Oh, yeah. I oh, read yeah, that one. Pathfinder. I was like, super thankful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We'll take all the Pathfinder critique we can get. Um, drop that base, 8651. Said, hell yeah. Always a good day when the Dungeon Cast uploads. Seriously, I listen to you guys almost every day on my drive to and from work. One episode usually, usually lasts the drive. That's the idea, baby. That's why we're making podcasts. <laughs> Indeed. We're glad to assist you on your commute. Indeed, we are. Uh, what does this say? Bila, Bilal, Murtaza, nine nine five seven says these things are such a damn hassle because you're never expecting it. It's like that and the rust monster, huh? It's true. Yeah, you're just really yeah. not expecting them. No, a giant penis emerges from the ceiling. It grabs you. Uh oh. <laughs> Texas Blade. Texas Blade says. They are making me think of cave leeches in Deep Rock Galactic. I'm not sure what that is. Me neither. And that makes me think it would be cool to have a one-shot campaign like thing, uh, like thing where you have a teleport drop pod that sends you out into the Underdark Caves for missions, and when you finish the mission, you have to get a new teleport location and wait for the circular to be inscribed to evac. Going to write this down in my DM ideas notes just in case I ever DM. That is a cool idea where you can like teleport into the certain locations of the Underdark to do yeah, missions and get it out. It kind of reminds me of the game Dark Darker, which is still in beta testing right now, but yeah. Yeah, like if you don't want to be, like getting in and out of the Underdark seems like the hardest part to figure out because it could be like extra super deep and like yeah. you don't know. Like, I don't know, I, I put my players into the Underdark by making them like fall down some shit and then wander down and like they had no choice but to wander down deep. And then I got them out by finding, like, a stone giant enclave that, like, had a path to the surface they were allowed to take. But it took them several days to walk through the stone giant enclave. That's pretty cool. I really like that. 
uh, Chris B four nine nine seven. You guys should do a YouTube only show where you just read and react to old dungeon magazines. It would be probably help drive people here, and it would be, you know, that is something we've talked about in the past. It, it would probably make a cool, cool project. Yeah. Um, King Blue Bonnet says you already know I'm here at episode drop, not for D and D, but for Will and Brian. Also, watch out, boys. You have a category four tropical storm heading for Cali, specifically Orange County. I think by the time we got it, it already passed. But thank you. Yeah, by the yeah. time this episode dropped, I think it was the same. Yeah, it had passed already. Yeah, it just passed. I mean, yeah. it did get real wet, and Sally, I was worried about Sally, Sally, my dragon turtle, as I normally do worry about her in rain, uh, especially mm. the kind of heavy rain we got. Mm. But she was out the next day because it was yeah. sunny. That's so funny because we don't live that far from each other, but like when I say it barely rained, it barely rained. Oh, no, it's yeah. super fucking rained here. That's probably, crazy. Probably harder than I've ever seen it rain. Really? And we wow. were expecting wind, but no wind came because uh -huh. I think we're too far inland. Yeah. For wind to break like that. Yeah, yeah I know in, in Mexico, like in Baja, California and stuff, it got real bad. Like, yeah, that, that wasn't so Which great. makes a lot of sense because it's a big peninsula. So. But my mom lives in Orange County and she was, her and my dad said there wasn't anything crazy going on except for like mad rain, like big, big time rain. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Derby, 3948, says, Your hard work is much appreciated. Keep delving into that dark that is under. We will. And then, the Dungeon Cast says, hey, everyone, don't forget we're giving away a copy of Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3 to celebrate our 50K subscribers. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below and to be entered to win. And that that does remind me, we're about 1,000 subs away or less right now. Yeah, so you guys have really closed moving. the gap. Thank it's you. Moving. Um, yeah, keep doing, keep getting us towards that sub. We're going to give away a copy for console or PC. I'm sure PC people are serious and probably already have it, but... Console folks, we'll buy we'll buy a copy for whatever console you have. Yeah, I just pre-ordered my own on uh on PS5. I'm excited. There you go. Um you can find us on Discord, you can find us on um X, Twitter, Mastodon. Don't call it that. It's not Twitter anymore. <laughs> the bird is dead. He's been crossed out. <laughs> um and you can uh hang out with us every Monday. Here. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, absolutely. From your favorite podcatcher or YouTube. <laughs> um, fucking what else? Uh, oh, um, Stark Seeker's Guide to Dragon Star. Yep. Working go get, on the book. Go get it. Uh, at the time of this recording, I will be finishing another chapter tomorrow with a new beta coming out probably the first, if not early second week of September. And a lot more to come. I'm going to try and do a beta every month. Um, but yeah, uh, we're actually, you know, I was just looking at uh, the new Critical Role book that's coming out, and it looks cool. But just so all you guys know, that book's like, what is it, like 60 bucks for that book? Oh, okay. No, and I don't know. It's something like that. And that book has... Uh, OGL killed my love of buying books from Wizards oh, of the Coast. Oh, I know. Yeah. Although that one's not actually... Uh, it is not published by Wizards of the Coast. Oh, okay, that's it's cool. It's their own. I think they have a, a a company called Darrington Press. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Jake will tell your special guest. Jake will tell me about uh what the contents of the book are. I usually buy them for him as like gifts. Oh, for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not because I'm not like I'm cool with Critical Role. I'd love to talk to somebody from. There, yeah, but, but you're not a follower. I don't Neither am I. I don't watch it. Neither am I. But what I was saying was, I uh, I believe they're only offering like eight subclasses, like fifteen magic items. Um, no new species or races, um, and, and my book has way more than all that. So uh, if you guys want to support that, uh, check it out. Go to drakenstar.com. That's D-R-A-K-E-N-S-T-A-R.com. And pre-order a book. Uh, every pre-order uh, helps us get this book to look even better uh, before the final product comes out. That's additional art, better printing material, and, and you know just more material inside of it. Um, yeah, so support it. Check it yeah. out. Um, buying a buying a copy of the book prevents wildfires because it um, it enc <laughs> it encourages us to do the right thing and so as we are not like prone to making wildfires happen as it is you're lessening that even more <laughs> even more asterisk it's hilarious there's an asterisk on all that all right. um, is that yeah, it did that, we get it all I think we got it all all right with that we will call it a game. Let's call it a game talk to you guys later.